So late last week, there was a tweet that I saw from some fanboy who was essentially begging for people not to subscribe to Xbox Game Pass. And while this is hilarious in and of itself, I really was thinking about it over the last weekend and early this week. Why on earth would anyone be bothered by the fact that people subscribe to a service? I really couldn't and still can't begin to wrap my head around that idea. So I figured I'd make a video and just talk about it. But there's really two things I want to talk about in this video. The first thing I want to talk about is this raging debate between physical ownership and digital ownership. And then the second thing I want to talk about is people using Game Pass versus just buying their games outright. So with that being said, let's get started. It's a debate that's been going on since the beginning of the previous generation of consoles, and that's physical versus digital ownership. And for me personally, I've always leaned more towards the convenience of digital ownership than physical ownership. But I do make exceptions for that. For example, once they announce the special edition of Halo Infinite, I will 100% pre-order a physical copy and get the biggest, best special edition that they have to offer. But that's simply because I can justify that purchase due to my overwhelming fandom for Halo as a franchise. But outside of that, I honestly steer myself towards digital purchase purchases more often than physical purchases. And there's two reasons for that. Reason number one is that it's obviously just convenient. It's so much quicker to just get a game digitally than it is to purchase one physically at a store or online. And reason number two is that the idea of physical ownership has completely shifted since the introduction of last-gen consoles. And I'll explain what I mean by that. Basically, back in the day, it was never a question that people were going to get games physically because, well, that's just how things work. You wanted a game? Well, then you probably went to GameStop or Walmart or something similar and picked the game up. And then eventually things like Gamefly came along, where physical copies were sent straight to your door. But either way, whether you shopped online or in a store, odds are good it was a physical purchase. But with the introduction of PS4 and Xbox One came this idea that games had to be downloaded even if you purchased them physically, which means that the disc that you purchased is nothing more than a key to a license to download and use that game. So even if you buy that physical disc, it's really no different than a digital purchase because the key to the license could be revoked whenever Microsoft or Sony wants. And this is an argument that people like to use against digital ownership. They often say things like, well, what happens if the game gets delisted or they remove your access to play it? Wouldn't that suck? Well, of course it would suck, but ever since 2013, they can do the exact same thing with your disc. If they don't want you playing that game, then that's it. You don't get to play that game anymore, whether you have the disc or not, it would make no difference. And this kind of leads into my next topic, which is things like Game Pass and PS Now. Because like I said in the intro of this video, I saw a guy on Twitter begging for people to not subscribe to these things, and I really can't understand why. Their argument is that it isn't sustainable or it isn't profitable for developers or publishers. Or hell, even Microsoft for that matter. They think it's not profitable for Microsoft to keep doing this. And this is something that always makes me laugh. You have these armchair devs or armchair businessmen on Twitter trying to tell Microsoft, a literal trillion dollar company, what is and isn't profitable and how to make their money. Like, trust me buddy, Microsoft knows how to make money. They've been doing it since the fucking 1970s. And another argument that these people like to use is that Game Pass subscribers are renting their games. And if that's how they feel about Game Pass, then I sure hope they don't subscribe to things like Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Hulu, Spotify, Apple Music, or anything like that. I mean, for me personally, I would have killed to have a service like Game Pass or PS Now back when I was growing up. I'm 27 years old and I play more games than I ever have at any point in my life, and I'm spending less money on gaming than I ever have in my life, thanks to Xbox Game Pass. 
I mean, just think of the amount of studios that Xbox has, especially after that Bethesda acquisition. I mean, just with Bethesda alone, they've got like four of my top 10 favorite game studios. And all of the games from all of these studios, I'll never have to worry about purchasing again. And if I do decide I want to purchase their games, then I can do it at a discounted price through Game Pass. It's really a win-win for me and anyone else who subscribes to Game Pass. And if I can be really honest with you, I haven't purchased a first-party Xbox game since, like, Forza Horizon 3, I think. And that was way back when it released. I think this was even before Game Pass back in, like, 2016. And yet, I get to play all of these games day one with no extra cost to me. I mean, I already pay for Xbox Live, so what's an extra $5 a month to play all these games day one on my Xbox and my PC? Like, right now, I've currently got 73 games installed on my Xbox Series X. And out of those 73 games, 20 of them are installed directly from Xbox Game Pass. And that's not including the games that I've already purchased and that have since been added into Xbox Game Pass. Which are games like Halo 5, Halo MCC, Doom Eternal, Destiny 2, and a bunch of other awesome games. The point is that it's not about renting versus owning your games. It's not an absolute one way or the other. You can have both and enjoy both. Like I said earlier, I'm playing more games now than I ever have in my life, and I'm buying less than I ever have in my life. And that means my favorite hobby isn't eating a hole in my pocket. And at the end of the day, that's a huge win for me and all the other people who use these services. But what do you guys think? Leave a comment below and tell me your thoughts on not just Xbox Game Pass, but also your thoughts on physical versus digital ownership, especially after the last generation and heading into this brand new generation. Leave a like if you liked the video, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button because it really does help more than you know. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.